Early on in my die-cast customizing days, I got the goofy idea of doing a take on the John Cooper Works Mini Cooper when I stumbled across a can of farm implement green paint. I thought it'd be funny to do a John Deere Works version of the Mini Cooper. I did it. I didn't like it. I've hated seeing it on the shelf ever since. And so what you saw spinning around on the turntable there was what just happened to it after I stripped it. <laughs> uh, it's not common for me to revisit old builds because I've got a lot of castings to work on. And I kind of like looking at some of the, the bad old builds just as much as the good ones because they kind of tell me what not to do. <laughs> but uh, I've wanted to make a Gaslands Thumper for a while. And there you see a, the speakers that are going to go on top of this Mini. A Thumper in Gaslands is a sonic weapon that flips cars over. Well, when the Diecast Mafia announced a camouflage Gaslands build, I thought this was the perfect time to revisit this Mini Cooper throw a thumper weapon on top of it, because it should end up kind of cute. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing with this one. I had to file the roof as flat as I could get reasonably get it, uh, because the thumper is flat on the bottom. And so as you saw a little bit earlier, I did that. Uh, I put screen in for the windows. And what I did here is I, I made the mesh so it would cover the side and back windows in one shot. And then I use a separate piece of mesh to cover the front window. That worked out really well. A lot of other times I've tried to make individual pieces for each of the windows. And while that works, for whatever reason, this time when I was doing it, I thought that's probably kind of stupid <laughs> if I can just use the mesh across all three windows, it'll be more solid. Now the wheels. Those are from the Hot Wheels Real, Real Riders Set 3 that you can buy directly from Mattel. That's the set that I hated out of that group. I thought, well, let me throw those on this build, getting rid of them, and I think they'll look good on this. I did file the little nubs off the bottom of the casting, off of the plastic base, because I want to put axle tubes on it. Um, and here you see that process. I ended up having to uh, really do some work on the wheel wells of the car. I needed to grind out a lot more room, even though I was mounting the axle tubes on the bottom of the chassis. I wanted the additional lift and I thought it would look better. And kind of like I mentioned earlier, I thought this would look cute as a thumper and I wanted to be a jacked up thumper. I don't want it ridiculously high, but at the same time, I didn't want it rolling at a standard height. So there you see me working out axle tubes for it. And uh, even though the real writers uh, sets that Mattel sells are really designed just to drop into a casting, I do end up cutting those axles in half, shortening them a little, uh, grinding some holes in the axle tube. You're going to see that shoot off here in a second because I forgot to cover it when I was doing this. Fortunately, it didn't fly too far away. Um, so I did grind some holes in the axle tubes as well. Uh, and then you see a good hole that I did spray those wheels. Obviously, you can see there I did not like the gold. I wanted them to match the camo. So that was the approach for the wheels, and we'll, we'll revisit some of that in a second. At this point, I decided to glue the thumper on there, and unfortunately, I pretty much did all of it off camera, but I'm just using CA to glue to hold it. It's a resin uh, printed piece. And uh, something else that reminded me of the thumper is I've been printing some of these for the Silva Challenge boxes. Now that I've got the resin printer going again after some battles with that, but uh, it reminded me that I really want to do a thumper. <laughs> and 
it's a cool little weapon. And I think a mini, a mini is a perfect thing to put it on. I could also almost see doing a big rig with it and just having a bunch of them on there. I decided I wanted some type of other weapon on here, guns for the front. And I decided to put those into the headlight housings. So again, this is a resin printed gun set that I probably should have just reprinted <laughs> short uh, muzzles and just put those on the car. But no, I had to try and saw the resin and it works. You just have to be exceptionally patient, not press down, let the weight of that saw blade do all the work. Then it was camo time, and I went with Tester's camo colors, sand and dark tan. And there's a way that I just love doing camo that I first saw over on Danny's Diecast Disasters. Hope Danny's doing well. I haven't seen any videos from him in a little while. Uh, sure do miss those. Uh, they were very informational and inspirational. So hopefully he'll be back at it soon. Uh, and I picked up this basically using clay to mask it off. And this clay is kind of a funny clay. It's almost foamish in a way. I'm not exactly sure what kind of clay it is. I picked a bunch of it up cheap off of Amazon a while back. And you just stick it on there. I, I sprayed the dark tan down first. Put the clay on, as you see here. I always try to remember to make the clay thin when you're rolling it up because it when you spray it the camo is wider then I hit it with the light sand and you just peel it off and I love the camo effect that results from that I've tried to do camo in a variety of ways and this one for me is insanely easy and I think the results are really you know they turn out great so I busted out some uh, some uh, Vallejo sand paint here because what I wanted to do, even though I stripped all the chrome off the base, and at this point you can see the axle tubes are already in. I've painted over the brass tubes with black. Um, but I wanted to dry brush the front radiator on this thing, the front grill area, with the sand because I didn't want it to be this big black splotch just on the front end of the car wide open. I wanted it to have some kind of tan effect to it as well. Dry brushing it like this made the bands, the, the recessed detail, still show up well. And this actually made me rethink of how I do radiators in the future or front grills in the future. I might approach them a little differently but we'll see. <laughs> I do like how this uh, results. And then once that was done, I've got the body painted at this point. I've got the wheels painted at this point. And now it's time for my buddy, Noln Oil. <laughs> Obviously the wheels were just one solid sand color. That wasn't gonna work. So I went over them with Nolan Oil. I go over everything in sight with Nolan Oil. I, I think it really gives a good look to the finished gas lands, wastelands type builds in a lot of cases. Uh, it gives you some weathering without it being obnoxious, <laughs> if that makes any sense. At this point, you do see I've, I've painted black in those speaker internals. I left the horns of the speakers camo. And uh, I had also painted the guns on the front black at this point. After going everything over everything with the Nuln Oil, I do take silver paint, and I do this off camera if I remember right. I take silver paint and dry brush over the very center of those speaker horns, very lightly. Uh, and same for the guns on the front. I take silver and dry brush those as well, just 
to give them a little more detail. It's, it's very subtle, but I like the results. And after all of this was done, I do uh, go with a flat clear. The real riders, they look too good. They look like brand new tires. So to give that rubber a, a worn look, as you can see here, I just go over it roughly with, I think that was 800 grit sandpaper, if I remember right. It wasn't super coarse, but it's enough to just scuff them up a little and give them, I, I, I was really happy with the results on those tires. And that was basically the end of the work. I did go over the interior heavily with Nolan Oil. I did dry brush some silver in there as well, even though you can't see any of it on the completed build. Uh, the only way you're going to see it is if you take it apart. Uh, again, I did go over it with the, the casting with the flat clear just to deaden everything else. I didn't want any real shine coming from it. And uh, that's it. I'm really happy with the results here. I, I like this a lot better than the John Deere Works Mini Cooper. It, uh, <laughs> this is a lot more appealing to me on the shelf than that disaster was. So I, I don't revisit builds often, but this one was bad enough that I needed to. And uh, anyhow, you'll see the end result here. It does roll. It's a roller. And uh, I think those wheels worked well on this build, even though when I originally reviewed set three of those real riders, it was the set that I thought was most out of place. So there you have it. That's the finished build. I like Thumper. <laughs> I hope you do too. Thanks to the Diecast Mafia for doing the camo Gaslands build because it just seemed right for this Thumper. Yeah, I'm, I, I like how it turned out. I hope you do too. Thanks uh, for watching these videos. Be sure and check out the other Diecast Mafia Gaslands camo builds. And... Uh, Everybody stay safe and healthy out there. There's some glamour shots coming up and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.